Okay, Lalita. Um, I think we'll have to wait for other people to be in here so I can try to mute them because I don't think I can mute you. Yes. I think um, I'm going to have to. I got my third dose yesterday, so I'm starting to get my chills. Oh, Lolita, so sorry. <laughs> do you have someone helping you on the, with the tech? Yes, I do. I do. That's fine. Uh, but I think I'm just trying to see how I can best. Oh, I got it. There you go. And then if you can make me a co-host, that's good enough. One thing you might wanna, or I can do it, I guess now if, if I'm, is um, there's some setting where you prevent people from um, recording to their computer. Um, I don't know if that's an issue for you, but anyway. I see. I don't know if anybody would be recording this and sharing it on their platforms. I have it as a record on cloud for us, so I can convert it into a YouTube link and send it to folks. Okay. Uh, but uh, hopefully. So you're recording now. We could even pause it for a bit. Okay. Right? If we're live on oh, okay. All right, we're on. We need some like elevator music or something. Jeopardy so music. It's, hold on, it says I don't have permission for that, Lalita. I think I'm gonna have to return you to a host um, status so that you can um, start well, the Facebook Live. And then I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, hold on. I don't see you, there you are, okay. Okay, 5.59, and we're starting at six, right? Because we're ending early tonight because we've all got dinner to eat and things to do. <laughs> Indeed. And did I just say that on the recording? <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Oh. It's okay. We're all human. We're all here, but we're all human. I know. It's like it's like those city council people who are saying nasty things with a hot mic on, right? Like, don't do it. Oh, so terrible. Okay. My clock says six. What do you all think? Should we start? No? Okay, great. Then I am going to kick us off. And we're live on Facebook and Eastside for All and Zoom. And thank you all for joining us this evening for the Bellevue Candidates Forum presented by the Eastside Asian Pacific Islander Coalition and co-hosted by Chinese Information and Service Center, Eastside for All, Indian American Community Services, the Seattle chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League, MAPS Amen, which is the Muslim Association of Puget Sound American Muslim Empowerment Network, Muslim Community and Neighborhood Association, and SAKWA, South Asian Americans Together for Washington. My name is Alaric Bien, and I will be your moderator for the evening. We have um, six candidates candidates uh, joining us here tonight, and we're very fortunate to have them all. So I'd like to introduce Dexter Borby and uh, Council Member Conrad Lee for Council Position Number Two, Ruth Lipscomb and Deputy Mayor Jared Noenhaus for Position Four, 
and Dr. Gina Johnson and Mayor Lynn Robinson for position six. Thank you all for being here. So just some quick housekeeping um, for the audience. If you have questions for the candidates, please put them in the Q&A down there. And uh, we'll have some time at the end of the evening for some audience questions. And for the candidates, again, you'll have limited time to answer each question. So please be sure to keep an eye on the countdown timer as you will be cut off when your time is up. We're, we're brutal like that. So with that, I would like to ask each of the candidates to introduce themselves in one minute. And please be sure to watch the timer. So Mr. Borby, why don't you kick us off? Well, good evening. My name is Dexter Borby and I'm running for Bellevue City Council position two. I'm an immigrant and a small business owner here in Bellevue. I came to the US to attend MIT and I've worked in various management and strategy roles for over 20 years, earning experience to bring to, to the council. Bellevue is reaching an important turning point in its development and needs a fresh voice and new energy on council. I am running because I'm looking to the future and want Bellevue to be a city where our children can grow up and live in. I want to address housing and affordability in Bellevue so that it can be livable for families, for seniors, and the young people who've grown up here. I want to retain the full range of professions that make a complete community, uh, including our teachers, nurses, and firefighters who are being pushed out. I want to address transportation so it works for, uh, for the people, for the residents and neighborhoods of Bellevue, just as well as for the people who come to work here. I envision a Bellevue that is livable, affordable, safe, vibrant, and diverse. The Seattle Times agrees with me and has endorsed me. I look forward to earning your votes and support tonight. Thank you. Council Member Lee. Thank you, Council. And you're on mute. Oh. Good evening. Hi, everyone. I'm Conrad Lee, council member. Most of you probably know me for quite a while because I've been on the council for 27 and a half years. Uh, I was the first minority person elected to Bellevue City Council. And I'm very proud to be uh, Asian American immigrant coming to this country, uh, seeking for American dream. And that this is indeed a place where that can happen. And it's evidenced by you know what happened to a lot of us. And uh, ever since I came on, uh, at the time when I first ran, uh, the first time I ran, I did not win, but I remained. Bellevue is a great city. Everybody wants to serve it. Everybody appreciates coming here. Uh, so I appreciate wanting to enjoy and, and continue to my service in the next uh, at least foreseeable future. And I look forward to continuing serving the city and the citizen of Bellevue. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lipscomb? Hi, I'm Ruth Lipscomb. I'm running for Bellevue City Council position uh, four. I moved to Bellevue 38 years ago, right, right after I graduated from college. I went to work at Microsoft as one of the first women engineers when the company had just over 300 employees. I left that job after 10 years when my daughter was young, and I've been a full-time community volunteer ever since working with dozens of organizations across the east side and the state and serving in leadership positions on many nonprofit boards. I've seen our city's population double since I arrived and I love what Bellevue has become. I feel like I've grown up with the city. We're now this vibrant and diverse metropolis that's drawing people from all over the world. That's very exciting to me. Bellevue has a thriving economy, but we're starting to see the challenges that growth brings. I'm running for Bellevue City Council because our city has the talent to solve big problems when we elect the right leaders. I believe I can provide the strong leadership, the problem solving skills and the work ethic that Bellevue needs right now to keep this a place where families wanna raise their kids. I'm looking forward to tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Neuenhaus. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, Deputy Mayor Jared Newenhouse. You know, four years ago, I was elected to the Bellevue City Council, and then two years after that, elevated to uh, Deputy Mayor. And it's such an honor and privilege to represent Bellevue residents as we navigate the many local and regional issues that we face. As Deputy Mayor, I promoted the Bellevue Way, the values of transparency, compassion, citizen involvement, and nonpartisanship. At the heart of how we work to reach consensus on critical decisions that maintain our city's high quality of life and services, and our reputation reputation as one of the safest, most inclusive, and most livable cities in America. 
Bellevue is a minority majority city with 41% of our residents, immigrants like myself, were born outside of the US. And I've been a resident for over 20 years in Lake Hills, Bellevue's most diverse neighborhood. Among my highest priorities are to increase public safety funding and training, increase the supply of affordable housing, further our environmental stewardship initiative and address our transportation issues. We need leaders not blinded by ideology, but our city council must continue to respond effectively and with urgency to the needs of our residents. Looking forward to the conversation tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Johnson. Good evening. Thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Dr. Gina Johnson, and I am a wife, a mother, an integrative physician, a nurse MBA. I'm also on the board. I'm a board member on the Bellevue Network on Aging. And let me tell you a little bit about myself. I live in downtown Bellevue and I'm an empty nester. And I really believe in public safety, strong neighborhoods and economic growth, cultural diversity. I bring that to the table as a fresh yet experienced voice. And I have spoken with many people throughout our community and people are just ready, ready for change. They want a responsive local governance, which I bring to you. And I'm just here to serve you, listen to your questions and to have this conversation tonight. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. And Mayor Robinson. Well, hello, my name is Lynn Robinson and I've been on the Bellevue City Council for the last seven and a half years and Bellevue Mayor for the last year and a half. You know, when I first ran in 2013, my goal was to create an equitable opportunity for everyone in Bellevue to have a high quality of life. And in my opinion, equity begins with housing and education. During the last seven and a half years, our affordable housing stock has doubled. Greenhouse gas emissions have decreased and we have a nationally ranked public school system. Bellevue has in fact emerged from COVID as one of the strongest economies and real estate markets in the country. But we still have work to do. We need leadership that will address our growing homeless problem with compassion and action, grow, grow our affordable housing stock further and tackle our climate goals while maintaining a robust economy. I'll continue to advocate for more parks and green spaces, more opportunities for people to live near where they work. And I will maintain a focus on equity, diversity and inclusion so that everyone in Bellevue has that opportunity for a high quality of life. Great, thank you so much, everyone. So now for the next set of questions, um, you'll each have 90 seconds to respond. But first, we're gonna lead off with a lightning round that is not timed. You just have to respond with a simple yes or no. So to begin with, the question is, do you think that everyone who wants to live in Bellevue should be able to live in Bellevue? Yes or no? Ms. Lipscomb? Yes, of course. Deputy Mayor Noenhaus? Yes. Mr. Borby? Yes. Council Member Lee? Yes. Dr. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Robinson? Yes, absolutely. Great, thank you. To follow up, um, I just heard today from one of my colleagues that many of our high school students, especially ones um, like mine when they were younger are not, that are not interested in careers in technology are worried that they'll never be able to live in the community where they grew up. How would you, as a city council member, ensure that Bellevue is affordable and accessible to all of our children and people who work here. And you have 90 seconds. Dr. Johnson, could you start us off? Yes, I'd be happy to, thank you. Uh, the issue of affordable housing is very pressing. Uh, definitely on our an biennial survey, housing and transportation were the top issues. And what I see as a problem is not so much that we don't have affordable housing, but we don't have enough of a supply. So we're underbuilding. Our developers are really having a problem with slow processes in government and also excessive taxes and fees, which gets carried over to the end consumer. We don't have enough affordable multifamily housing or single family housing. And I know there is talk about bringing in more middle housing, but that hasn't happened yet. 
And so we have a lot of work to, to do to make housing affordable. Certainly for our workforce housing and say our new workforce housing, we could certainly make uh, multifamily housing more affordable. Uh, we did actually have some projects that went into the spring district that, we, that were intended to have affordable housing, but the developers were allowed to purchase out of that. And so that percentage of uh, affordable housing did not go in. And so that, that's a problem and we need to address that and not have those types of loopholes. If we promise affordable housing, we need to make sure that it does happen. Thank Great. you. And I will work towards that. It's very important to me. Mayor Robinson, what would you do? Oh, well, you know, there is such a significant need. Only 10% of the housing we have in Bellevue right now is affordable to a family of four earning $80,000 a year or less. That's a very small amount of housing in that price range and below. So we need to have the full spectrum of affordabilities in Bellevue. And I worked very hard to create an affordable housing strategy four years ago, which was voted in unanimously by the council and since that time, we've doubled our affordable housing stock, but we obviously have a tremendous amount of work to do. And the fees in lieu that my opponent is referring to were actually used to purchase, help purchase the um, Highland Village Apartments, which retained affordable housing for 62 school district children's families and uh, was able to permanently maintain that as affordable housing. We've done that quite a bit in Bellevue most recently with our partners uh, with Microsoft and Amazon to also retain the Illahi apartments as low income or affordable housing. So we need to do a lot more work of retaining existing affordable housing, building the full spectrum of housing and really working at those deeper affordabilities of zero to 30% AMI. And I think that that's going to include uh, micro housing of some sort so that our kids coming back from college can afford to buy their own place and work their way up. Uh, Ms. Lipscomb. Thank you. Uh, this issue hits home for me. I have a 30 year old daughter who is currently living with me because the, uh, the rents are the highest in the state in Bellevue. So when it costs $2,000 a month for a one bedroom apartment, that's not affordable for hardly anyone in our, in our city. And we're having the impacts of that affecting many other things. They're affecting our transportation system because our essential workers are driving really long distances to commute to their jobs. We're having trouble, some of our smaller uh, businesses are having trouble attracting workers because they do not want to have that commute and they can't afford to live in the city. So we're going to have, the housing issues is such a huge problem. I think that we need to increase the supply of housing at all parts of the spectrum. We need everything from the subsidized housing to that is for zero to 30% of the area median income, all the way up to uh, market rate that can be affordable for people buying their first home. And I think that we get that by looking again at our zoning. Our zoning is restricting what can be built across the city. And I think that there are ways that we can protect the, the quality and the character of our neighborhoods while we increase slightly the density and, uh, and make sure that everyone has a place to live. Great, thank you. Deputy Mayor Nowenhouse. Well, thank you. Yes, um, as uh, others have commented, uh, a big issue for Bellevue, for sure. But um, the, the city has also helped produce so far nearly 1,300 affordable housing units since uh, 2017, as the mayor alluded to. The strategic housing and affordable housing plan is in progress. Approximately, you know, 1,000 units are currently in development. But is it going to be enough? No. But the council, uh, including myself, been actively looking at uh, different ways to increase that affordable housing and that includes everything from you know projects utilizing incentive programs like the multifamily tax exemption that we just updated you know this work will be enhanced by recently adopted changes um, to elements of the Bellevue's land use codes to increase townhomes and attach accessible accessible uh, 
dwelling units that my opponent mentioned already. So we've got such things as affordable housing incentive for faith owned and public surplus and nonprofit, uh, or sorry, not, not for profit housing properties, developing affordable transit oriented development on public land, such as project located on the current sound transit uh, operations and maintenance facility, um, affordable housing incentives for the East Main area that we're looking at now, uh, changes already to the city code for the parking minimums for multifamily uh, developments for workhorse uh, housing specifically, and then developing the work program for utilizing the House Bill 1590 sales tax money that's coming in. Uh, that will go directly to affordable housing and behavioral and mental health services, but that affordable housing will make a, a big impact uh, with the money that we're going to use exactly for that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Borby. Well, good evening. Yes, you know, um, housing is a problem in Bellevue when basically about 31% of um, all the people in Bellevue are cost burdened, meaning they spend more than 30% of their income on housing. Um, and what I want to do is I want to address both the underlying issues as well as the immediate problem. Um, in, ter in terms of the underlying issues, we have some economic forces that I think are causing uh, housing prices to continuously go up in the region, right? Housing prices have gone up over 225% over the last 10 years across King County. And that's largely because of a lack of supply. Um, to that end, basically, I want to work towards measures that increase the supply. Um, one, as Ruth had mentioned, to revisiting our zoning decisions and looking at how we can thoughtfully upzone um, certain areas so that we can create more housing opportunities in those places. I also do want to look at our ADU regulations and see how we can normalize that to be comparable to other cities around our region. Mercer Island, for example, has some of the most reg uh, relaxed uh, ADU reg regulations in our area. They're doing pretty well. Um, I am also in favor of transit-oriented development, just as Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor Newhouse had, had spoken about, um, and creating housing where basically there are transit corridors to reduce the impact on, 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 on congestion. Um, I do also want to work on our affordable housing programs and look at how we are managing our monies right now uh, in terms of rental assistance and, um, uh, and other forms of, of housing assistance. Right. At the end of the day, I think we, both, we have to address both the short-term and long-term um, causes of, of basically our um, on affordability. Thank you. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the term ADU, stands for accessory, accessory dwelling units, which are like mother-in-law units. Um, and now we have Council Member Lee. Thank you. Housing is always being a problem, a challenge for Bellevue. Bellevue is a highly desirable city. Everybody wants to live here. So the demand is extremely high and supply, as we know, is limited. And uh, so, you know, I think that everybody knows the seriousness of that. It's getting even worse today because there are more and more people coming here because Bellevue, compared to other cities, more desirable. When I first came to this country, I first graduated, come to work for Boeing. You know, obviously, it wasn't affordable to me as a, a poor immigrant <laughs> getting my first job. Uh, but I work hard. I, my wife and I both, you know, we work. And we try to do whatever we could. And we're very fortunate to be able to squeeze in. So it's always been a problem. And however, you know, this, we all know the problem. We all know the challenges, but it takes people to solve it. It's been taking Bellevue people for a long time, 30 years. When I first got elected to the council, Arch was uh, established, a uh, regional coalition for housing. It's a regional body that's doing housing problems, solving the problem, housing, women, shelter, uh, children, families, and it's continued to do so. And we are not doing, as Deputy Mayor just said, a lot more housing we've done in the last year than many, many other cities have in the region. So it takes people, good people, people who understand and come up with solutions. That's what we've been working on, just what we've been doing. Thank you for the people, for the council. Thank you. Um, I've been told that my volume was not very loud. Is this better? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry about that. So now we have another lightning round question. Uh, and the question is, yes or no, do you support permanent supportive housing in Bellevue? Mayor Robinson. Absolutely. Dr. Johnson. Uh, yes, with a safety plan and public oversight. Council Member Lee. Yes, with careful and thoughtful planning and implementation. Thank you, it's a yes or no question, Mr. Borg. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, from me. Deputy Mayor Newenhouse? Yes. Ms. Lipscomb? Yes. Great, all right. So the next question is, uh, what should the city be doing to address middle-class working families 
who are very much at risk of losing their housing with the lifting of the eviction moratorium, as well as landlords, some left without rents for the last 18 months. Council Member Lee, you have 90 seconds. Well, I think everybody needs to have financial support. I think all the responsibility costs has to be shared. So we need to look at situations. Absolutely, renters who are most in need need to be helped. And at the same time, people who provide housing, you know, rent, uh, owners provide housing. The same thing with developers that have to build affordable housings. We want to have more housing, more options, and more supply. You know, it's a simple market force. Uh, we cannot ignore that. I think so most of us have the same goal, same objectives. Mm -hmm. The challenge is how do we do it in the right way, in a thoughtful way? Like the earlier question you asked, we support, of course we do. <laughs> but the question is how do we do it? And do it in a responsible way uh, or doing, uh, doing an irresponsible way? And I'm always for responsible way because this is what has proven to be successful, to be true for Bellevue. As a result, Bellevue has remained consistently you know, to be successful where we continue to do the things we want to do. We want to do things that's worthwhile, but if we don't have any financial resources, it's not going to happen. It's a pipe dream. And so, it's and very so important. Can I just interrupt? What is a responsible way? Well, making sure that we have resources going to the right places. You know, it's how you do it. That requires participation, citizen involvement. We, city council, have to be reasonable, put our minds together, put diverse communities together, conversation, come up with solutions together. If I have a simple answer, we don't need to have a council. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Orby. I, yes, no, I think, I think that's a very fair question because it does show the two sides of the equation that need to be balanced uh, in order to, to make things work, right? On one hand, you have a family that needs to be able to make the rents. And on the other hand, you have the landlords who, are, who have been paying carrying costs and uh, other, other forms of financing to be able to, uh, and to, and to be able to make their ends meet as well. Um, I think at the end of the day, there needs to be money that goes in, that goes, that goes in there. Um, so, and so, so to that effect, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things, a few things that the cities can do, right? Number one is to look at extending the, um, the eviction moratorium, right? And, and do it in a thoughtful and reasonable way and, and figure out what the, what the proper and, um, and, and correct period might look like. Number two, um, look at grants and other funding uh, from both uh, from county, state, or federal resources in order to help with this extension of this eviction moratorium. I know that this that this kind of funding is um, is uh, is in high demand uh, across many communities across the country right now. Um, and number three, it's not only it's not only people who uh, you know the, the pandemic has affected not only renters but has affected homeowners as well. Right, and there are various agencies and organizations that help with prevent with preventing foreclosure uh, that the city can can tap uh, can work with and tap into as well in order to help uh, people who find themselves in those situations, right? Um, and 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 to to you know uh, and to and to this point, of course, it has to be done in consultation with all the parties being affected, right? Um, because we want to provide a balanced, measured response. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Nowenhouse. Thank you, and a great question. In fact, we just received an update on this last night at City Council where there's approximately 40,000 uh, households right now that are in danger of losing their home if they do not get the assistance they need right now. Now, primarily this is due to, to COVID, but the, the real problem or, or part of the problem here is not just the money itself, but the money is not getting to the people that need it. Up until a few weeks ago, only about 4% of about $150 million was actually getting to the people who need it. Now, thankfully, over the last couple of weeks, they've grown that up to about 30%, but clearly um, they need to get that out quick and Bellamy needs to be a partner as much as possible in that. Now, we work very closely as liaison to the Human Services Commission. I can tell you that it's something that we track very, very closely. And we really lean on a lot of our partners and nonprofits agencies that we work with to get a really good handle of how many folks are in danger of losing their home. And thankfully, uh, due to ARPA funds, due to uh, COVID relief funds, due to um, the great um, donations by companies like Amazon, which put a million do dollars towards our human services fund, uh, we've been able to get those funds out to families who need it to keep them in their homes or keep them in their apartment, uh, who may be you know, one month or two months away from uh, become, becoming homeless. So we want them to stay in Bellevue. We want them to be safe in Bellevue. And we want to get them those funds. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Lipscomb? 
Thank you. Uh, I think that we need to look at the scale of this problem. Obviously, the city of Bellevue can't come up with enough money to pay everyone's back rent. But I think that we should make sure that we are using the dollars that are coming from other sources. Most of these are coming from the federal government, are being distributed equitably and wisely. I think that we uh, should be looking at what caused, what is currently causing people to if the eviction moratorium expires, what would cause them to uh, be evicted? And part of that might be that they have they had a period of unemployment last year, but they have not been able to pay the back rent that they owed from the couple of months that they were unable to work last year. I think we need to look at whether there are, um, you know, we can give smaller amounts than to a particular um, families and keep them in their houses. I also think that the city of Bellevue, our lever here is possibly in utilities, in that a lot of the people who are behind on rent are also behind on their utilities. So I would think that uh, the city should look into some utility forgiveness for people who are also on the verge of eviction so that the, uh, the money that they owe to the city does not cause them to be evicted because they can't pay rent while they are trying to pay their utilities. Great, thank you. Um, Mayor Robinson? Well, I'm very proud of the rental assistance programs that Bellevue put in immediately when rental, uh, make, people making their rent became a problem at the beginning of COVID. And we, instead of focusing on a uh, eviction moratorium, we did work on funneling as much money as we possibly could toward rental assistance. There's a big number of uh, people like the deputy mayor mentioned at risk for eviction in King County, but in the city of Bellevue, it's really, it's uh, about 2000 households that we've estimated. So we have put, uh, the city itself has put over $7 million into rental assistance. As been mentioned, our large employers have, have contributed as well. We opened extra grant funding cycles for the Human Service um, Commission to distribute as much money as we were getting in from the federal government, the state, the county government, and distribute that to the agencies that serve the people in our community. So there's been a very concentrated effort to help and serve the people in our community. Um, and uh, we also, on the City of Bellevue website, have a very good helpline there where people can get information and call in if they are uh, fear eviction. And we're also doing mediation services between tenants and landlords to help them come up with resolution and come up with maybe a rental bargain. Thank you. And Dr. Johnson. Uh, yes. So what, what I'm seeing here is a problem where we're putting on a Band-Aid when really a tourniquet is required. So we've had this over a year now problem where people are not able to pay their rent. And then on the other side, we have landlords, many of which are also families who are now unable to pay their mortgages. So it's been disastrous and it's really has been the result of a mandated economic recession. And so as a government, we have a responsibility to fix the problem. What we're doing now, just putting more and more money into the problem is not sustainable. We are receiving federal funds, ARPA funds, and they will only go so far and they won't go forever. So they don't actually solve the problem and the problem continues. Right now, Bellevue has double digit unemployment, about 10.8% was listed in our economic report. And at the same time, we're raising property taxes, we're raising utility fees, we're even raising ambulance fees. So there's many reasons people cannot afford to stay in their homes, whether they are a landlord or a renter. And so we need to actually stop mandating economic closures. We've had too many businesses in Bellevue close, especially within the service sector. And those are a lot of jobs. And we need to change that. And we need to change it fast. Thank you. So this last lightning round question is not a yes, no question, but really a forced choice between two. And so the question is, do you think, number one, that Black lives matter? Or number two, that all lives matter? 
Deputy Mayor Nohenhaus? Oh, what a question. <laughs> um, well, I'll say Black Lives Matter because Thank we you. did Ms. Black Lives <laughs> Definitely Black Lives Matter. Mayor Robinson. Black Lives Do Matter. Dr. Johnson. Yes, Black Lives Matter, but all Council lives Member matter. Lee. I'm not sure your question uh, is it, I can't. How, Black how Lives Matter that? or that... All Lives Matter? Well, both are true. I agree. Which both. one would you choose? It's a lightning Which one round, first choice. I choose All Lives Matter. Thank you, Mr. Borby. Black Lives Matter. Thank you. So as a council member, how will you support the work of the new chief diversity officer, the new chief of police, and our BIPOC communities going forward. And again, for those who might not be familiar with the term BIPOC is our black indigenous and people of color communities. Um, so how will you support their work? Uh, Mayor Robinson, you have 90 seconds. Well, you know, I have been supporting the work. I'm really proud of council members Zahn and Barksdale for bringing forward a new initiative for circling communities of color where we really bring the voice of our BIPOC community into reviewing the policies that we have and the policies we'll have in the future. Uh, we just did an independent review of force um, of our police department with the, um, the push to have an equitable treatment of all people in our community, regardless of race or um, background. But, um, you know, we, we support Bellevue Welcoming Week. We have cultural conversations. We have great translation services. We're really important. We run a Bellevue Essentials program, which is accessible to everybody in Bellevue. We have incredible diversity there and see people coming onto our boards and commissions from there and the city council. We and, sponsored and a going large- forward? I'm sorry, Pardon? going forward? Oh. Going forward, well, I will continue to uh, support those kinds of things. And I think that, you know, we have a new interim police chief and I just had lunch with him today and we talked a lot about what the future looks like for our policing and how we can include the community into decisions that are being made and conversations that are being had about our policing. And every time, you know, whether it's a multi, the cross-cultural center or uh, cultural programming, uh, the community voice is gonna be really important to have and I'm looking forward to those conversations. Great, thank you. Uh, Dr. Johnson. Uh, yes, I look at the world through the lens uh, basically where, and using the words of Martin Luther King, Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that we all arrived here on different ships but we're all in the same boat. And I bring my own Hispanic American perspective as a person of color, but also just as an American and as a human being. And so uh, the, the biggest thing that I look at is forming connections, forming relationships, because Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King also believed that if you knew a person, if you developed a very intimate relationship with a person, you would, you would not have racism. And we would look at character and not color. And I think we can bring that into our city government. I think we can have more cultural activities that bring people together. We can build bridges and not have division. And I think that's really important now because I think we really aren't doing enough to focus on the beauty of our cultural diversity and how it's a strength for us. And we use that as our diversity, as our strength, as our, as our city uh, basically vision, but we're not doing enough to actually live it, right? I got the, the, the pleasure of growing up in a multicultural, multilingual, diverse community and family. We didn't all have that, but we can have that and the city can help. Thank you. Council Member Lee. Thank you. Well, uh, I believe when I said earlier, all lives matter. You know, I really mean all lives. That includes Black Lives Matters. <laughs> you know, and I appreciate you emphasizing each one individually because that's how we begin the process. Okay, we need to help everyone when this opportunity, when we can do it. So Black Lives as a result matters because that is the most essential, critical at this point. So are perhaps Indigenous people. You know, if we look at 
from another perspective. So why everybody? So I don't think we need to, cannot, we cannot belittle any one effort. And so we need to uh, do it. And uh, so I believe that uh, like, you know, Gina was just saying earlier, uh, based on Martin Luther King just said, you know, we got to be all working together. I have a project that uh, I'm glad the council supported. It's called Cross Culture uh, Center Project. It's an effort to bring all people all colors, races together, learning about each other, communicating, understanding each other, and finally uh, working on the ability of cutting across silos we're building. This world is divided. Opera Winfrey just endorsed a book today. It's called Divided. And it's amazing how we have divided so much in the last number of years. And we need to work together. We need to cut across barriers, understand each other, and get each one strong enough to work together, together, together. Thank you. Mr. Borby. So, um, you know, some time ago when my fellow Asians were being unfairly, unfairly targeted with violence, we created the slogan, um, Stop Asian Hate, to draw attention uh, for fairness and justice uh, for, for Asian people. And it, I think it is in the same vein that our African-American and African friends have created the slogan, Black Lives Matter. It's to draw attention uh, to, for, uh, to ask for fairness and justice uh, in the way they're, they're being treated, right? So I, th I think we cannot belittle it by, by diluting it and calling it all lives matter. Um, I think in terms of, now specifically in terms of, in, in terms of how we're doing here, I think on, on one hand, I think our, you know, uh, across the nation, you know, that, that there's a bigger problem there, but in Bellevue, the Bellevue Police Force has been great in terms of being transparent uh, and providing and providing basically statistics and numbers uh, to show how they have been doing and working towards um, a more equitable approach uh, towards uh, toward policing, right? I think I think um, cultural exchange is a big avenue, right? It's a very important thing to do when you get to know somebody as a person. You don't see them anymore as an as a stereotype or an entity. You know them for who they are, um, and I think to that effect, we need to have. Uh, you know, Bellevue is a majority minority city. 51% of Bellevue uh, is our, our minorities, right? And it enriches everyone's lives to have a lot of people uh, coming from different cultures. Uh, people travel to experience other cultures. We have it all here in Bellevue. I think, um, so yes, and, and I would support all city efforts towards that effect. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Neuenhaus. Well, thanks for the question. And I, and I really think it starts with the council that is uh, very attuned to the fact that um, we uh, embrace diversity. Uh, diversity is something that we understand it's a strength and uh, we always uh, continue to strive toward that. I mean, perfect examples is uh, as the mayor had mentioned there about hiring our first ever chief diversity inclusion and equity officer. Um, you know, and then and then it goes beyond that. It goes, it, it's 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 continually building upon the things that we have uh, started, and then building upon them even further, um, such as some of the things that the the mayor uh, had mentioned previously. Um, but adding on to it, such as our 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 uh, centering uh, communities of color uh, that we recently just uh, just passed with our with our with our recent uh, budget amendment to that. Um, you know, and then adding on to what we're already doing with our diversity advantage team, the diversity the Advantage Summit, providing immigrant and refugee resources, and really celebrating our immigrants in our community as well. I invite anyone to just go to Bellevue TV or to our website and watch immigrant stories throughout Bellevue and as well as city employees that are immigrants as well. It's, 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 it's fantastic. And then I think it's also about calling out, as, uh, as Dexter mentioned, calling out hate when we see it. And the hate has no place here campaign um, was, was a big part of that to call out when we see hate, uh, to call it out and make sure that uh, it is stamped out. So uh, I'll stop with that there. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lipscomb. Yes, I um, am very excited that the city will finally have a director of diversity, equity, and inclusion, because I think for too long, the city has had just um, a minor uh, focus on equity. And I think last year changed a lot for a lot of people uh, where they realized that now we really have to make that a lens that we put on every decision that we make. I would like to see the city take advantage of Dr. Linda Whitehead, who has been hired into that position. I think she is fabulous. And I think that she has deep roots in Bellevue that will help her 
using her own experience and reflecting on the experiences of others in the community, she will be able to see some of the things that I as a white person can't see uh, that I have not experienced. And I think that we need to make sure that we elevate the voices that are not currently being heard at the city level. I think we also need to look a lot harder at the data. I believe that there is policing data that we do not have. We don't know uh, about how many traffic stops there are based on the race of the people who are pulled over. I know I've been pulled over several times in, in the 38 years I've been in Bellevue, and oftentimes I've not been given a ticket. We only keep the data of who is given a ticket. I think we have 30% uh, of our uh, uses of force by police are against black people when they are only less than 3% of our population. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Um, now we're going to shift a little bit and ask uh, specific questions to each candidate based on some of the materials that um, we found uh, in your in your campaign materials. So um, again, you'll have 90 seconds to respond, and we'll start with Mr. Borby. So Mr. Borby, your background is in healthcare. On your website, you note that 45% of Bellevue residents express concerns about affordable insurance, access to childcare, healthcare, and dental care. While at the same time, 38% of health providers said that they have clients who need care but can't access it. In your position on the city council, how specifically would you address these issues? Yeah, no, thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, and it, it's, a, it's indeed something that's a passion of mine. No, I think um, you know, it's interesting. So to, uh, num number one, I think there's not really a count, um, there's not really a city health authority, right? I think the lowest city uh, health authority is at the King County level and then at the state level. Um, but you know, I would be more than happy to be a, a voice on council to working with our county uh, health authorities and with our state health authorities to highlight the needs of Bellevue residents and workers in terms of healthcare. Um, now, the second thing is working with our community providers and with our, um, with our companies and the industries, right? Uh, for example, you know, we need more childcare, uh, for example, in Bellevue downtown, right? And what can we do to encourage that kind of business uh, to grow um, uh, in, in areas where they need to grow, uh, where they need to be accessed, right? Number three, um, it goes back to the general affordability problem, right? When you're looking at a lot of middle income professions like nursing, um, not, uh, you know, and I experienced that in my own business as well, we're having, you know, in, in terms of having seen a nursing shortage in the area, um, uh, because it, it's a relatively unaffordable area, nurses have to commute in from, from far away, uh, and are also, and, and at the moment, also being pulled away uh, with crisis rates in different other states that are experiencing higher levels of COVID. Right, uh, but at the end of the day, long term, we do need to. Uh, this, here's a funny little story. I was speaking with a doctor, uh, this a, a doctor at the Swedish primary clinic, and she said that they hired two new doctors. These are doctors, right? They hired two new doctors. They can't afford to, to buy homes in Bellevue, so they bought in Linwood and commute over an hour to get here. Right. Um, so I think we need to address uh, basically, you know, work with, with work with our community providers, work with uh, the state, county, and health uh, state and County and health, state, county and state health authorities, um, and work towards making it both be more affordable. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Council Member Lee. In your tenure on the council, you've seen many changes in our city. Uh, your website states that over the last 27 years, you've been consistent and focused on improving our transportation system. Could you please tell us what specifically you've done to improve it in the past, and what more you'll do in the future? Uh, transportation has been a big challenge, obviously, with growth that we are seeing and uh, with the limited, uh, you know, s space that we can accommodate, you know, the traditional way of transportation. So we're developing a multimodal system, and that's very important. So people can find options. I always believe in options. The greatest thing coming to the United States is you have options. Nobody tells you what to do. <laughs> you have options and the options depends on technology, depends on uh, availability, depends on money and all these things are necessary. So as we grow, we are going to be, you know, we have seen the Sun Transit coming in, light rail. So during my term as the mayor, we we're able to work with Sun Transit, despite of the city's uh, citizens' uh, insistence of apparent, apparently fighting for, but we're actually working together to get the best result we have. 
So we are very happy it's happening. And we're working on the mass transit and all the other stuff. Technology, however, is going to be a major solution. And I've done that since I came in the council. We are laying on technology, fibers on the ground, technology devices. We're gonna have zero vision to provide safety. We're gonna have artificial intelligence. We're gonna have autonomous vehicle. All these things are gonna make the system much more efficient. As a result, safer, more efficient, and less congestion. This is what's gonna help in our future transportation system. Thank you. Next, um, Ms. Lipscomb, two of your top issues are increasing affordable housing and ensuring public safety. And there are some community members who feel strongly that allowing a wide array of housing choices, including supportive housing, may be a threat to public safety. How would you convince them otherwise? Well, I would say that if we don't have, if we don't provide the housing and the services that the homeless in our city and our region need, then they will be much more disruptive by living in the parks. We, you know, people are, are very quick to say they do not want anyone camping in the park, but if we don't have an alternative for them, then uh, we're just basically telling them that, that that's the alternative we're giving them. So I think that uh, we need to make sure that we have all the different pieces of public safety that we need. And I think that that definitely includes a very strong police force. It includes our fire department. It includes our emergency medical services. But one piece that I think is missing is the mental health crisis responders that we don't currently have. Other cities in our region, Redmond, Kirkland, Issaquah, all are ramping up new programs where they will have first responder uh, medical uh, professionals who will go out and help deal with mental health issues. And I think that that will help increase the safety in our community, uh, both among our, our housed and our unhoused neighbors. And I think that there, there's no reason to, to say that, uh, that you know, supportive housing is always going to be a uh, security risk. I think that we can, we can mitigate and we can work with the providers to make sure that doesn't happen. Thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor Nowenhouse, one of the issues that you've worked on in your first term on the council is the environment. And we all know that this summer we had some of the hottest temperatures on record and raging wildfires that fortunately for us mostly blew smoke the other way but what role should the city be playing to combat climate change? And how will you work with businesses and community groups to make this happen? And you're on mute. Sorry, I was on mute there. <laughs> no, very good question. Something I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about and quite frankly, something that the city still has a lot of work to do. Um, but having said that, um, I think uh, I'm very proud of the work that we've been able to accomplish through the uh, new environmental uh, stewardship initiative, um, where the city is really committing to some of the, the really big issues facing us from, 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 a, from a climate perspective, environmental perspective. And we're really committed to re reducing our greenhouse gases emissions by 50%. Uh, we really are committed to 15% um, less energy and the energy we will be 80% uh, renewable. We're really committed to working with businesses, uh, especially to reduce the amount of um, um, uh, of energy that are coming from from those uh, from those businesses, so encourage them to use uh, more more green materials, more energy efficient materials, really helping us reduce those uh, greenhouse gases. And then we really are committed to eighty percent of our households um, living within a third of a park, an open space. So really becoming that 15 minute city so people don't have to get into their cars all the time. And part of that is having those facilities or infrastructure to, uh, to, 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 to help with that. So for example, you get on your bike to go to the grocery store or go to the park instead of having to get into your car. So really committed to that. I'm also very proud of the fact that I put for an amendment to have an advisory committee taking advantage of the expertise in our community to be ambassadors and help implement this program in our community because there's a lot of great, very smart people on the environment in our community and we need to tap it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, next, Dr. Johnson. On your website, you state that you, uh, quote, are, uh, un, you are, sorry, that you're opposed to, quote, unrestricted shelters without public oversight and accountability. Can you tell us which shelters have no oversight or accountability 
and what would you do to address them? Uh, yes, thank you. So uh, basically, we are speaking in regards to the shelter hotel that is coming in actually to Redmond on 152nd. And there is no current safety plan or accountability plan for that. And there was no public oversight. And so there are citizens groups that are concerned and that are speaking out against it. But as a resident, we would just like to have more information from our city and have our city be accountable on how that plan will be in place. Also, we do have the Eastside Men's Shelter coming in. It, it will take a while to be built. And I definitely attended city council meetings. And I know that a council member, Conrad Lee, did actually bring up a motion to ask that there would be public safety oversight, like increased police patrols of the area funding for that. And no one seconded his motion. So I have concerns that we would put shelters in place that are lower barrier, meaning that there might be drug use or alcohol use on site as opposed to a treatment first model, which has evidence for working and I would support, and also making sure that we have the adequate emergency services on board and also mental health services on board. For example, could we refer people for rehabilitation? And that would be very important. Thank you. Thank you. And Mayor Robinson, you cite equitable opportunity for high quality of life as a particular area of focus for you. So many of the issues we've talked about tonight are inextricably linked together. And I know it's complicated, but in 90 seconds, could you please give us the bullet points for what you would do to address workforce development without the affordable housing that we need right now, while not making traffic in our city and region even worse? Well, you mentioned all the key points that are in interconnected in that response, and I appreciate that. You know, uh, anybody who's willing to work a 40-hour week should be have a living wage. It's just it's painful to see people working one, two jobs and trying to raise a family and still unable to buy a home, barely able to rent a home here in Bellevue. So, you know, I really think that we need to raise the minimum wage, which is not up to our city per se, but I am advocating for that regionally and globally. But uh, in the meantime, I'm working really hard with our large employers. You know, we have 30,000 high tech jobs coming into our city and they're not, they're not all high tech, I shouldn't say that, but from the tech com uh, companies. And they'll be higher paying jobs. And we're partnering with Bellevue College, we're partnering with Coding Dojo and other programs in the UW to create um, training uh, classes so that uh, somebody who's like a mom who took off from the workforce to raise her family or a dad who did that and has been away from work for a while, wants to get back into it, can get training a three month training, get a certificate, and then get an internship with one of these companies and get one of those jobs. If we can hire the people that are already here and help them earn more money and make it easier for them to pay their rent. And that whole concept of living where you work, only 10% of the people who work downtown currently live in Bellevue. So if we can switch that, we're gonna change our traffic situation significantly. Great, thank you. Um, and now we have some questions from the audience. And again, these will be 90 second um, answers. Uh, the first question is, do you support creating a fund to support capacity building for minority led organizations? As a sitting council member, what have you done to improve the funding process? And if you are a new candidate, what ideas are you bringing to the platform? Ms. Lipscomb. Yes, um, as a uh, person who Actually, my entire career was working at a startup, uh, which was Microsoft. Um, I'm very interested in us having um, opportunities to, to form new businesses in Bellevue. I think that one of the most important things we can do is start looking at ways that we can have rental spaces for new businesses that are, are beginning so that we can uh, have those 
uh, companies be able to go that the first few months or couple of years without having to have a uh, uh, income coming in. Um, I believe that we have a need in Bellevue for more public spaces and for more spaces that are shared with our community. And I think that there's an opportunity to have a the cultural community center built and to also add some other spaces that could be for, um, you know, business incubation and for opportunities to to have mentoring for for businesses. I think that we may need to make sure that all of the city's services and all of the opportunities that are offered are available and accessible to um, business businesses that are starting with any um, with a startup team of any cultural background. Thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor Nuenhouse, do you want me to repeat the question? It's kind of long. You're on mute. Yes, could you please? Sure. Do you support creating a fund to support capacity building for, for minority-led organizations? And as a sitting council member, what have you done to improve the funding process? Yeah, um, excellent question. Yes, I would be uh, for um, furthering funds uh, for, for, for minorities. Uh, and, I, and I think a lot of these um, ideas for these types of funds will come out, out of some of these programs that we've currently um, created, um, such as the you know, centering uh, communities of color, um, I think is going to give us a lot more uh, understanding of what is uh, lacking in our community, what we need more for in our community in terms of centering communities of color. And I think that's going to give us, to 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 a large extent, it's going to give us a roadmap of those uh, of those areas that we are falling short as as a community. Um, I also really hope that it's going to uh, give us a greater understanding of of uh, outreach that we need to do to particularly to uh, communities of color that are underserved. Um, we, we, we notice that time and time again that our strategy for outreach uh, is, is, is one that we need to improve on. But once that outreach piece is taken care of, I think we have a much greater understanding of the funds that we can create to be it create, uh, help create new businesses, um, uh, help create training, financial training, whatever it might be, but create those funds uh, specifically for those um, uh, communities of color, for minorities in, 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 our, in our city. And I would be uh, happy to uh, to move that forward as uh, as uh, deputy mayor. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, same question, Mr. Borby. Do you need me to repeat it? No. Uh, well, I think what what one thing I might ask for clarification on is what is the definition of a capacity fund as per the as per the question stated. I think that's up to your interpretation. I didn't okay. make the question, so. <laughs> okay. No worries then. No, I think uh, I think yes. I think it's great. Uh, Bellevue is a majority minority city, and I think we need to have. Uh, businesses, education, um, and employment reflecting uh, sort of that diversity as well, right? As a small business owner who started business not a few years ago here in Bellevue, um, I want, uh, I think there's an opportunity to help educate, or not educate, but help facilitate new businesses that want to set up here in Bellevue by helping them figure out how, uh, where, to, where, where, where they can set up businesses, uh, who, who can they connect with and talk to? Uh, what does the market look like? You know, there are many things that as a small business, you would have to figure out for yourself, right? Uh, but uh, on, on top of that, um, one of the things I forgot to mention a while ago in terms of housing was I am in favor of mixed use development, right? Because one of the effects of mixed use development aside from reducing transportation need is it creates, uh, it creates opportunities for small business by locating amenities and businesses close to residences, right? Um, and I, and I think that would, that, that would be helpful in that area. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I think that in terms of uh, supporting, you know, minorities in terms, uh, there's, there's one area is business, another area is employment, right? Uh, and it's helping people uh, find, find jobs, find work, uh, and get the education that they need in order to build the skills uh, if they don't have it, such as for many of our immigrants and refugees, um, you know, who are trying to start a new life. Uh, to be able to access that kind of that kind, and so there's the capacity. If that's capacity funding, I'm all for it. Okay, great. Uh, Council Member Lee, thank you. I absolutely understand your question because I'm absolutely supporting that. Uh, you know, the underserved population, the minorities, you know, which you're talking about, uh, they need to build capacity. We need to serve our own people, and the people, meaning the people who are the most connected 
to the community, that understand the community, that trust the community. You know, it's the, it's the trust the messenger idea. And when I was SBA administrator, you know, appointed by President Bush uh, many years ago, uh, I realized that, you know, the country, 90% 90, 90 is made of small businesses in Bellevue, even though we're very fortunate, this large company coming to us are here, but still we are mostly more, 80 some percent, 90 percent is small business. And many of these small businesses are immigrants, new, new populations, community, and we need to build the gaps. I've done that because of the COVID. The city is able to give money to lots of small businesses that have not traditionally been qualified under the federal regulation and rules and red tapes. Bellevue has been able to cut it. So we have improved our gap uh, capacity to fill the gap where these unrepresented, underserved community need to be empowered. As we know, Human Services Commission, every year they got so many requests in very few, most of them are not even considered. So this is important that they need to be recognized, to be helped, we need the funding to help them. Great, thank you. Uh, Dr. Johnson, do you, would you like me to repeat the question? Sure. Okay. Um, so do you support creating a fund to support capacity building for minority led organizations? And as a new candidate, uh, a new council member, what ideas um, are you bringing to the platform? Thank you. Uh, yes, I do support that. And I would have to say I've been on the receiving end of such capacity improvement type resources. So within Bellevue right now, we do have a startup 425. It's put out through the Small Business Administration. I think we could expand upon that program. It offers very good courses that are free to the public, um, which would serve everyone in our community. And definitely we have underserved and we have underrepresented individuals that we could do better to move forward. And that would include people of color, women, older adults, you know, many different groups that we wanna see be able to thrive. And one of the greatest things government can do, whether it's federal, state or local government, and here we're talking local government at the city council level, is to improve economic opportunity and, pros and the hopes of prosperity for everyone. And so by allowing people to start businesses, that really is one of the first steps to achieving independent prosperity and opportunity. We could do better by having uh, incubators in place. We could have grant funds that are in place. The SBA class was very good, but then you were sort of left at the end um, on your own to kind of find your resources. And there could be a little bit of handholding there where the city would partner with the SBA and you know have an incubator plan, have funding in, in plan and have mentors actually available for people as well. So I would like to move forward with that. Thank you very Thank much. You. And Mayor Robinson. You know, uh, when I first got on the council, I was able to convince our uh, staff to create a low cost incubator where Lincoln Center is or was, it's since been torn down for light rail. But for three years that functioned as low, uh, uh, low rent office space with um, business assistance services for small business and was very successful and served a large minority small business owners. Um, we've put a lot of money into uh, a company in Seattle that gives business advice to minority and immigrant owned businesses. And that's been very successful, but I've been involved with the Greater Seattle Partners uh, Re Seattle Area Recovery plan. And at the very end, after a year of working together, the recommendation, which I really support, is that you should support BIPOC women and uh, young women in their careers, in their education, help them get those promotions, help them get on the job track and provide them with childcare and supportive services so that they can get those jobs and they can move up in their careers. And if we were able to do that as a region, they say that our economy would improve by 35%. So I'm all in. Great, thank you. All right, our second audience question is, as a city council member, you will have the opportunity to represent Bellevue on a regional entity or entities. Uh, what is your first choice assignment? 
And how will you bring the voices of the tradi sorry, traditionally marginalized um, community members to those tables? And I'm gonna start with you, Mayor Robinson. Uh, <laughs> so if I could have any assignment, what would it be? Mm -hmm. And how would I? Well, I love the arts, okay? I never get to be on the arts, anything, because uh, people are hogging that, I think. I'm just kidding, but I never get that. But if I had that choice, I would be on the arts. I would be liaison to the Arts Commission. I would be involved with our art programs and our, our co cultural arts programs and really get the voice of the community out to the public in a way that's accessible to everybody so that we can enjoy the different art styles, the different music, the different celebrations and, and food and everything that we have the variety of here and really support the people who create the art and the people who want to enjoy it, make it accessible so that wherever you are living in Bellevue or if you're in school or working, you have access to the arts and there's a, a real good variety of it. And how would you reach out to those communities that have not been engaged up until this point? We've tried, you know, um, how would you do that? You know, I talk to a lot, a lot of people reach out to me. We have a lot of community groups who rehearse in their garages who are looking for space. So I think that, you know, not having one grand space, but having many accessible spaces all over Bellevue that are in people's communities close to where they live, close to their, where they work and close to transit is going to be the way to get people engaged and feeling uh, that they belong and that this is part of their world. Great, thank you. Dr. Johnson, your dream assignment on a regional committee and how are you gonna bring the voices of the people, the BIPOC community in particular? Yes, thank you. So because the number one problem facing Bellevue right now based on biennial surveys is traffic congestion, I believe it would be very important. And so my dream assignment would be to assist with that. And people that I've spoken with in many diverse communities have really shared that they either don't feel that transportation works well for them, that it is safe, convenient, accessible, and uh, you know, affordable, basically. So I would wanna work to make sure that we are solving our gridlock problems. We are providing enough parking for people where they work, where they shop, where they play. And I wanna make sure that we are promoting ridership. If we're going to be promoting public transit and making affordable housing around transit hubs, we need to ensure that those areas are safe for everyone and that everyone feels comfortable and welcome to use those. For example, here's a situation, transits are com transit centers are coming in for light rail and they may not have enough restrooms. I know that sounds like an interesting problem, but if you're a mother with children or you're an older adult, a restroom is very important. And so I just wanna make sure that everyone feels like they have a voice at the, at the table and that transportation is accessible and safe and that even our night shift work, workers can get to work safe, safely. And so basically public safety and good, reliable, affordable transportation for everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Deputy Mayor Noenhaus, your number one choice for a regional committee assignment and so, how are you going to bring our voices of immigrants and disenfranchised folks to that table yeah yeah excellent question first off um boy there are so many assignments i think that we all covet from time to time but actually i'm, I'm on one right now that um i i i it's it's one that that i covet because i feel like i can bring a lot of my expertise towards um in my in my background and that's on the uh, domestic violence initiative regional task force um through the um uh, sound cities association um my experience at uh, lifewire which is a, a nonprofit that 
uh, assists um, those affected by, um, by domestic violence and able to bring that expertise, uh, not only from that background, but also from the background of being the liaison to the Human Services Commission, where uh, we're making important decisions because, A, we're listening to our residents, and specifically, um, we're listening to um, the underserved communities through our great or, uh, organizations and partnerships with nonprofits and really understanding how domestic violence is impacting those underserved in our community, especially now during COVID-19, where unfortunately we have seen domestic violence rates go up dramatically. So it's never been a more important time to be on this regional task force. And I really, um, really appreciate and honor the, uh, the ability to bring my expertise and those voices to this task force to help improve not only laws and, and books and uh, or, or the laws that are already on the books, but improve laws that are there and bring some more laws to ensure that um, everyone can, uh, can live in a safe environment in our city. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lipscomb, your number one choice for assignment. Well, I've never backed away from hard problems. So of course I would want to be on art to work on housing, on regional housing problems, because I believe that that really is our biggest problem. And if we don't address it and address it soon, Bellevue is going to be making decisions that will impact the livability of our city for generations to come. I think that uh, being a, a regional operation is very important because uh, so many of the decisions that are made in other cities affect our housing and vice versa. And so many of the people who work in Bellevue live elsewhere. And so many people who, who live in Bellevue do commute out for work. So I believe that if we attack our housing problems regionally, there's a lot that we can learn from other cities and from the experiences they've had with, for instance, detached accessory dwelling units and uh, with increasing density and with how they've developed their transit-oriented developments that I think we can use in Bellevue to do the best job we can do here. I would definitely want to reach out in new ways and look for new ways to, to bring voices in. One of the problems I think with the City of Bellevue's outreach is there isn't really a feedback loop where people who give input are not aware of how that input was used and how that feedback was was actually built into decisions that were made. So I would uh, definitely bring more people into the decision-making process early. Great, thank you. Council Member Lee. Yes, the, um, the committee I would like to be on, which is I am on now, it's economic development. And uh, I believe that especially for uh, underserved communities, immigrants and minority groups, uh, the most important thing they need to take care of is economic, uh, you know, uh, opportunities so that they can compete. Uh, you know, everything comes down to uh, the resources that we have and the opportunity they have to make it successful. So, you know, I've been working on the uh, Puget Sound uh, Regional Government uh, PSRC's uh, EDD, Economic Development District Board. And I'm very lucky to work with a group of folks uh, that are you know, consisting of private sectors, Amazon and others, and the other jurisdictions. And how can we make this region more economically uh, friendly and working with strength and whatever we can to enable people to be more successful. Uh, so I think this is the bottom line. Once we have that, we have to work on transportation system because that's what helps the economic development. It's all very intertied and the people themselves are going to be able to participate in being enterprising and being, but the, first of all, they need to have a system, they need to help, they need to have a uh, nourishing environment. And so I think this is what the city can do. That's what the region can do. And that's why the state can do. And so we need to be all working, talking to each other, helping each other out. Thank you. And Mr. Borby. Well, thank you very much for this question. It is the King County Regional Transit Authority. Um, many, many people who are members of our um, uh, minority and uh, marginalized communities, Bellevue's a, Bellevue is a, an employment center and many of these people have to suffer long commutes uh, to get into Bellevue to access employment. And, um, and at the same time, uh, when they spoke with the city management staff uh, about some of the things that they wish to see from a council member, it is to work 
with um, with our neighboring uh, with our neighboring cities, with the county, uh, and with the state. Uh, particularly in the areas of transportation, right? We have, a, there's a lot of things that city management is doing within our city for transportation. There's some things that are not in their direct control that they hope a city council member can hope, uh, can work with um, all the other surrounding cities and regions uh, and, and region uh, for, right? Uh, and transportation is definitely one area where what happens in, uh, in other parts in the region affects Bellevue and vice versa, right? Uh, completion of funding for the northbound 405 uh, um, so for example, completion of the Bothell, Bothell Transit Center, uh, so that they, basically the flow can be smoother from north to south. Um, and all those little projects that are surrounding Bellevue will help people uh, from outside Bellevue to access uh, the employment opportunities that we have and, and be able to start businesses here. Great, thank you. Well, I think you know, we were supposed to end by 7.15. We kind of faked people out by saying it was 7.30, but we really wanted to end early because being on Zoom for, you know, an hour and a half is, is tiring. But um, we'd like to wrap up tonight by giving each candidate one minute uh, for closing remarks. And let's start with um, Ms. Lipscomb. Thank you so much for this conversation tonight. Uh, as we've talked about all evening, uh, Bellevue has a number of issues that we need to work on. I believe we're at a crucial turning point where our city needs to have active leadership to move towards solutions on housing, climate change, racial equity, public safety, transportation, and a whole host of other issues. Housing will be my highest priority because when our service, retail, and other essential workers can't afford to live in the city anymore, Bellevue loses some of what makes it special. I want us all to come together to make sure that the next generation has the same opportunities that I and many in my generation have had to make Bellevue our home. There's a reason that so many of the East Side elected leaders and so many organizations at the state, county, and city level have endorsed me. They know I'm ready to bring a fresh style of leadership to the Bellevue City Council, one that's transparent and responsive to our changing realities. I'm ready to get to work for Bellevue. I'm Ruth Lipscomb, and I would be honored to earn your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Neuenhaus. Well, thank you. In closing, I'd like to stress again the ideals that have made Bellevue the great city it is today. We're a progressive, forward-thinking city with unique characteristics that really make us stand out in this region as well as across the country. It's so important that we embrace and conserve those characteristics while also keeping our eyes out for opportunities and new innovations to embrace and manage growth and doing so in a way that centers our residents. My endorsements represent the diversity of our city. From labor unions to business alliances, from Bellevue firefighters and police to the Humane Society of Washington, you know, from progressives like State Representative Amy Whalen to conservative members of the King County Council like Reagan Dunn and past and current mayors from Bellevue, Renton, Burien, and many more. There is so much potential for our great city, but we need proven leadership and unbiased, dedicated public public servants in office to realize these aspirations in an inclusive and nonpartisan manner so that everyone can thrive. It's been an honor to serve this great city and I hope to continue to serve our residents and businesses through another term in office. My, again, my name is Deputy Mayor Jared Newenhouse. I hope I've earned your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Borby. Well, thank you. I envision a Bellevue that is livable, affordable, safe, vibrant, and diverse an economic and cultural center where people from different backgrounds can live in, in prosperity and harmony. But to do that, we need to face and address the critical issues in the city's, city's future in housing, public safety, environment, transportation, services, and more. I'm ready to serve. I will listen to all sides, look at the facts, and put in the work. I will work with the neighborhoods, with the county, the state, to find solutions for our residents, workers, and businesses. With my professional and business background, I will bring with me the competence, leadership, drive, and compassion to work for the people of Bellevue. I've been endorsed by the Seattle Times, the Sierra Club, the Washington Conservation Voters, Alliance for Gun Responsibility, the King County Democrats. I've also been endorsed by most of our legislators covering Bellevue and by four of the seven sitting council members, uh, including Marilyn Robinson, who's here, uh, as well as several former mayors. Uh, I'm Dexter Borbe running for Bellevue City Council position two, and I would be honored to serve on your council. Thank you. Council Member Lee. Thank you. My life uh, is and has been dedicated to Bellevue. I appreciate serving 27 half years to the citizen of Bellevue because I could do other things, you know, uh, such as high offices, but there's nothing more satisfying and to see people in Bellevue 
uh, so doing well. And as we all seen, Bellevue has been doing well, progressing well. We become a major uh, minority, my, uh, uh, majority city. And it's just amazing how it has progressed in the 30 years or since I ran. I want to compliment API uh, coalition. It's 30 years ago when I first ran, there would never be something like this. Today, we're seeing that. Today, we're seeing majority and the immigrants, populists like myself. So I'm continuing to do whatever I want to do. I want to compliment the people who are interested as API to want to do it, but they have to learn. They have to do the right way. They have to serve. They have to do the Bellevue way. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Johnson. Yes, I'm Dr. Gina Johnson. I'm running for Bellevue City Council to help families and businesses, everyone, achieve their city in a park dreams. I believe now, more than ever before, our city needs a strong voice, fresh yet experienced, for safety and opportunity and jobs and cultural connections and common sense solutions. I stand for strong neighborhoods, thriving businesses, and sound growth through responsive local governance. I would appreciate your support and your vote. I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor Robinson. Well, I've been in service of Bellevue residents since I moved here in 1997, first as a volunteer in our schools, as garden club president, as a small business owner providing physical therapy, home care to older adult clients, as chair of the Bellevue Network on Aging, as chair of the Bellevue Parks and Community Service Board, as council member and now as mayor. I love my city and I want to ensure that everyone who lives here experiences a safe and welcoming environment, clean water, fresh air, good public education, access to parks and green spaces, multimodal transportation options, access to healthcare, stable housing and opportunity. I'm looking forward to working with the community to address the challenges of our growing city and to celebrate the opportunities that growth will bring. And I'm very proud to be endorsed by all Bellevue state legislators and regional leaders. Thank you. Well, I just wanna thank everyone here for your participation tonight, to all of our candidates and to everyone in the audience who joined us. We had lots and lots of other questions that we didn't have time to get to in the chat and in the Q&A. So I would encourage you um, to reach out directly to our candidates um, and talk to them. I will speak for them. They will be happy to talk to you. They love to talk to people. And don't forget ballots are coming out on October 13th and due by election day, which is on Tuesday, October 2nd. Thank you everyone and good night. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.